What was your best comeback line that left the other person totally speechless? We were in street. Petersburg. Russia waiting in line for Peterhof Palace. A group from France behind us were infiltrating the lines and trying to skip ahead. I heard a lady behind me say, in French, let's go ahead of say Americans. They won't understand. Double quote. I speak French. So I turned over my shoulder and said, why don't you stay back the way you belong? Thing is, my French is actually Canadian. And the lady said, oh, they're Canadian. Forget it. Double quote. Not my quote. But I was with a buddy of mine who was known to be sort of a loose cannon. We're drinking at the bowling alley and there is a family next to us and the men are wearing turbans. My friend is of Mexican descent. And at this point he's had his fair share of beers. He turns to look at one of the men wearing the turban and he says. Hey. Why do you wear that towel around your head? Double quote. And without skipping a beat. The other man shoots right back with a to wipe the wet off your back. Double quote. I've never seen my friend look more stunned. Even drunk. He knew that he had just been defeated. We left shortly after this. My mother. Your son is so much better behaved than you were as a child. You were horrible. Me. Probably because my son has better parents. Double quote. My grandma. You're such a big baby. Me. I'm not the one wearing diapers. Double quote. R.I.P. Grandma. I'm at a female friend's 50th birthday. Me. You are an old lady now. Double quote. Huh? Please. I have the pussy of a 12 year old. Double quote. Me. Well. Give it back. You're wrinkling it. Double quote. There was a moment of silence until the entire group screamed with laughter that lasted a full minute and a half. My dad was joking with my little cousin. Who at the time was only 8. Dad. Pat's his right bicep you see this? This is thunder. Pat's left bicep this is lightning. You don't want to get caught in the storm. Cousin. Without missing a beat, reaches up and pats my dad's head which was not a seably bald on top looks like some clouds are missing. Double quote. While shopping for houses a few weeks ago with my wife. I mentioned I didn't like this house because it lacked a garage and out of frustration my wife snapped. I don't know why you want a garage. You suck at working on cars. I instantly fired back with I don't know why you want a nice kitchen. You suck at cooking. Both her and the real estate agent were pretty quiet after that. I had to cook every meal for two weeks so I feel like I lost the war. I love that fucking woman. If I wanted to kill myself. I would climb up to your ego and jump down to your IQ. Guy just went speechless and left. Double quote. Edit. Just to be clear. I actually did say this but not to someone I hate. Me and my friend were having an insult contest and I won with that one. He actually did go speechless and walked away. Not angrily. But out of shame that he lost. Had a friend whose girlfriend broke up with him at a party. In front of many people who stood around gawking. To really make it sting. She told him he was terrible in bed. Without missing a beat. He said. Just because all you ever want is anal. Doesn't make me bad in bed. The look on her face is something I remember to this day. This guy at my college job always had something to complain about every single time he came in. Friend was talking to his girl. Girl didn't want to hang out with him. He hit someone else in traffic. Etc. One day we were having a store meeting with everyone in it and it was early in the morning so I didn't feel like hearing it and I was particularly short with him. We were standing in the group and he apparently had just told everyone the story of how he was going to be in low spirits today because his girlfriend broke up with him. I came in a bit late to the circle and everyone is just kind of staring at their feet. He was good at milking a crowd. Me. What's up? Everybody? Him. I just let everyone know that my girlfriend dumped me last night so I'll probably have to take it easy today. It was about 10pm and she called me. Yeah. Yeah. Life's tough all over. You've prepped your excuse for laziness. Gotcha. I meant. What is the meeting about? 
group just started laughing and he kept his mouth shut for the rest of the meeting. Sounds petty. But I felt great and everyone was thrilled that he stopped milking it for 20 minutes. I was maybe 10-12 and my brother was 11-13 years old. This still remains my best comeback. He said something about me being fat and wearing orange and looking like a pumpkin. Any. Yeah? Well yeah. A. A. Tomato. Him. What's that supposed to mean? Any. Nobody knows if you're a fruit or not. We were pretty sheltered kids. Yesterday I was at a local party and passed a group of about 5 while on the way to the toilet. One of the guys in the group said. Ro. You are fat, which is true. D. I just replied. Yeah and you are ugly. Life is tough for us. That sentence had him flabbergasted and the girls in the goop lodging and while I gave myself a little jab it just felt so good to shut that guy up. Backstory. Drunk with friends. Way too many people in a hotel suite. My friend had just learned that he had gotten a girl pregnant. Was being an asshole to the rest of my friends and I. I alone had paid for the hotel suite. Drunk friend. Fuck you Evan Sire. I'm way too drunk to be sleeping on the floor. I'm taking your bed. Me. Up. Uh, but this is my room. I paid for it. Pretty sure that gives me the right to sleep in my bed. Double quote. Drunk friend. Just crash on a couch. Dick. I'm sure one of them has to pull out. Double quote. Me. Yeah. Unlike you. Double quote. Boom. Edit. My top voted comment and it was something witty I said when I was drunk. Go figure. Yes. I got the bed. We're no longer friends. But that's a whole other story. And he just walked away with his mouth open. Are you gonna fight me or are you gonna fuck me? Double quote. This little wimpy shit was in my face doing the bro walls with me over something utterly stupid. He had lost the game of pool we were playing. He threw down his cue. Marched up to me. Got right up in my face. Mouth breathing. Swearing. Trembling. Clenching his fists. And essentially going full retard. Everyone in the bar had turned to watch this spectacle. And I just stood my ground and quietly let him have his meltdown. This went on for while I longer than it should have. And it became very awkward when nothing else was going to happen. Breaking the tension. I plainly stated are you gonna fight me or are you gonna fuck me? The whole bar erupted in laughter. And the kid turned to his friends looking for backup and they were laughing too. He turned beat red and stormed out. Got back to playing pool. And I had a nice warm feeling for the rest of the night. Thought of another one that I didn't say. So I was walking through Spain in a smallish town. It was a hot day and people were wandering through the streets. There were two English tourists stood on their balcony overhanging the streets. They shouted to these two fit looking Spanish girls and started singing the Queen song. We are the champions. We are the champions. Double quote. One of the hot girls turns and shouts no time for losers. Double quote. It was a glorious moment. Not super proud of this but it did shut the guy up. I deservedly got punched in the nose in middle school for making fun of a kid and was ridiculed by other kids because I was crying after it happened. For the next few years. Another kid always teased me about it. He would always ask how my nose was and all I would ever mutter was a fuck you or something equivalent. Well in 10th grade his mother had passed away and he was gone for a few weeks to deal with it. One of the days he came back. I walked past him on the stairs and he asked his usual question. Hey new green. How's your nose? I guess I finally had enough and snapped back at him with hey. How's your mom? He never talked to me again. I feel terrible about it. But he kind of had it coming. TLDR. Dead mom. I was at the bank cashing a check I had received from helping tile a neighbor's house. The neighbor liked to go to a lot of strip clubs. And being from a small town the bank teller knew him. And evidently that fact. She looked at me. Smiled. And asked if I wanted the check in once. So that I could go out later. Insinuating frequenting a strip club. Without missing a beat I replied. Only if you'll be there. She blushed and everyone laughed. 
the teller handed me my money. Flustered. And speechless. My mum said that women could be seen as having more right to a child because they gave birth to it. I told her that if I put money in a vending machine. The coke that comes out belongs to me. Edit. Oh wow. This blew up. I didn't mention that this conversation was done in a very light hearted manner. And I meant no offense to anyone. Everyone in the conversation had a big laugh at this. Including my mum. Awkward 7th grader. First day at new school with no friends. Jackass on playground. What's the capital of China? Me. Beijing. Jop. Nope. It's Bangkok. Goes to slap my crotch. I block his move. Slap him on the face. Me. Bangkok is the capital of Thailand. You jackass. Please don't touch my penis. Everyone around laughed hard. So many friends. My finest moment. A fat girl in high school used to always give me a hard time. I slimmed down one summer from a growth spurt. And when she passed me in the hallway she smiled shouted in mock enthusiasm hey. Have you lost weight? Reflecting back her, her mock enthusiasm I smiled and shouted hey. Have you found it? Double quote. She never spoke to me again. Planning to split a hotel with with my girlfriend and sister. Told my sis you know what the sock on the door means right? She said yeah that you need alone time while I go shopping with your gf I responded well at least buy me socks. She said I'll be sure to stop by the baby gap. Burn. Back in the late 60s I had very long hair and wore the flowery stuff that was the fashion. No onion in my belt though. Dot. Anyway. I was dating this girl whose mom hated me. After us naughty exchange I asked her what her problem with me was and she said I think you are effeminate. I replied compared to you I guess I am. Double quote. I ran into a friend at the market and asked her how her trip to Florence was. She went on complaining about how she'd been overcharged for this. Cheated out of that. Etc. I said. It sounds like Gullible's travels. A perfect stranger passing us at that moment said. That wasn't very swift. Dot. Maybe you had to have been there. My aunt who is severely schizophrenic and kind of out there said this. Still makes me laugh. My great aunt was a big complainer and always had something wrong with her. Anyways my mom. My aunt. My great aunt. And I went to a nice dinner. During the dinner my great aunt wouldn't stop complaining about aches and pains etc. Out of nowhere my aunt says. Well aunt Polly. You about ready for us to take you to the glue factory. Still makes me chuckle. No bullshit. Guy I know borrowed a DS from a friend for like 2 months and returned it with the top screen all smashed to pieces. They got into an argument and the friend calmly said. You know what. Fuck this. Fuck you and fuck your mother for good measure. Double quote. Then he found his mom on Facebook and took her out on a date. Random guy. You know. You'd be really hot if you didn't have such a weird personality. Double quote. Me. I'm glad I have a weird personality. Because now. I don't have to reject doucher bags like you. Double quote. I left him speechless in my tracks. Santa Cruz 1994. I was arrested for carrying a bowie knife and dagger on my belt. The cop was doing the intake medical questions. Heart disease. Asthma. Diabetes. ETC. At the Santa Cruz County Jail. Run by the county sheriff. And I am pissing him off by replying to each question. My personal medical history is none of your business. Dot. Until he asked any history of sexually transmitted diseases. To which I replied. Dude. I don't even know your wife. The deputy witnessing the intake for the jail lost IT laughing. Had there not been cameras and witnesses I think the cop would still be hitting me with a baton today. Charges were later dropped when I showed them that the law clearly states dirks and daggers are illegal when carried concealed. But that open carry is specifically legal, PC 12020. Old man. Didn't your dad tell you smoking is bad for you? My friend. Didn't your dad tell you not to talk to strangers? I think this was my best. 
When I was about 30 my authoritarian father said to me. Whether you're 10 or 30. I will always be your father and that gives me the right to tell you what to do. Without skipping a beat. I replied whether I'm 10 or 30. I will always be your son and that gives me the right to tell you to fuck off. For once he had no retort. But his face got extra. Extra red. High school sports team trip. New coach looked like Gargamel from the Smurfs. Had inexplicably brought along a hot college chili at a room with him. Younger kids on the team were goofing off and the coach received complaints. He came over to yell at all of us. Someone had called me over here and told me to take control of you little monsters. Double quote. Without missing a beat. Youngest team member casually says. You need to control your little monster. We all lost it, eventually. Even the coach. I accidentally said shit over a walkie talkie at my work. A random guy tries to be funny. Damn dude. Do you kiss your mom with that mouth? So I say. Nah man. I kiss yours. Double quote. Stranger you should stop smoking. It's going to kill you early. Me my grandfather was a smoker you know. He lived to 102 years. Do you know what his secret was? Stranger no. What? Me he minded his own fucking business. My dad once introduced me to some of his friends with. This is my son. He ain't worth a shit. Double quote. I shrugged and responded with. The apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Double quote. Everyone. Including my dad. Was laughing too hard after that for anything else to be said. On Facebook like 5 days ago I saw a heavy ginger girl post a status. With all these creeps around I'm going out to buy a rape whistle and another random person commented that's very optimistic of you. Double quote. Me. You have no idea what coochie tastes like. Double quote. 14 year old shit talking cousin. It tastes like shit. Double quote. Me. You licked the wrong whole dumbass. Double quote. My fanatically religious right wing crazy aunt vocalizing how we should kill all the inmates and save us a lot of time and taxpayers money. Me responding with. Aren't you pro life? Double quote. Me at dinner table. Excuse me I need to use the bathroom. Double quote. My brother. What? Do you need some help or something? Me. Yeah. The doctor says I shouldn't lift anything heavy. Working the day gig as a barista when a gaggle of kids and their parents came in from soccer game. Start taking their orders and I take the time to take each person's name for each cup. One of the dads said his daughter's name and said what? I don't look like a Christian? And I paused. Looked him over and replied though. That's right. How are you Christian? Haven't seen you since the surgery. Looking good. Apostrophe. The guy was a good sport about it though. The other parents all laughed. The daughter looked embarrassed as hell and I got a $5 tip. Ex-girlfriend and I were breaking up. She had purchased the linen on the king size bed. She decided she was going to take all the bed stuff she bought. So I saw this and helped her. As it was hard for her to remove the mattress cover. My parents helped me buy the mattress. As she removed her side of the mattress cover. Bitch is all. I'll just take my stuff off the bed mommy and daddy bought you. Double quote. Me. Too bad mommy and daddy won't buy you anything. Double quote. Bitch is all. I don't want anything from your parents. Double quote. Me. I was speaking of yours. Double quote. She doesn't know who her father is. And who her mother kicked her out of her house. They haven't spoken for a year. Another gem. And a nuclear option. Your mother was right about you. Double quote. My best friend in high school and his girlfriend got into a big all out screaming match in the middle of their street. They lived across the road from each other. She insults him with something along the lines of yeah that's why you have a small dick. He instantly replies with it's big enough to make you choke. Double quote. One more. I was arriving at a beating for work. It was about 5 minutes from starting and everyone else was already there. There's this one doucher bag named Rob who always had something to say about someone. 
I had hurried through getting dressed earlier and chose a black silk tie that was a little older so it wasn't as dark as the rest of those who attended. The black tie was part of the uniform. And he said to me where did you dig that tie out of? Goodwill? That's a total joke. To which I sleepily replied in a monotone voice well your face is also a total joke. But you don't see me finding the need to point that out in front of everyone too he was heinously ugly. My tie was a bit ugly too. But still. He was pleasingly quiet the rest of our meetings. My sister was masturbating really loudly today with her boyfriend over Skype and I started to sing loudly to block out her moaning and she said not knowing I could hear her shut up you're so loud. Double quote. My response. Ha 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 me. You're the loud one. Double quote. She awkwardly shut up and finished in silence. I'm not gay. But the rumor was going around that I was. Morbidly obese girl and her friend. Anorexic with the skin texture of a mushroom. Decide to sit at the table across from me. Yelling how much I like to take dick. I very loudly stated that at least I can get some dick. High fives were given and the rumor died. My old boss when I worked as a welder on construction sites had a wild sense of humor. One day over lunch with the guys he asked me what I was up to that weekend coming up. I replied it's my birthday. I'm probably going out with friends. Then he asked me how old I was going to be. I replied 30. My boss being funny replied well it's all downhill from there and since he was at least 20 years older than I was I said well you ought to know. You have been on that climactic roller coaster drop for years. He then said I am a roller coaster ride baby. He was speechless and damn near fell over laughing when I said just because some woman puked on you during intercourse. That does not designate you as a theme park ride. This one is for you Pete. My audio recording teacher is an old rodent named MR. Freebug. He loves joking around with his students, wow. I wanted to come listen to what you are working on. But Johnson 005 is so ugly I just want to go back from where I came from. He's a 65 year old white man who is very adept at freestyle rapping. One day I said something smart to him. And he freestyled for at least 2 minutes on my song. Just absolutely decimating me. As the song faded out. I said not bad for someone who's going to be dead in 20 years. He laughed at that for a full minute and then said not bad. He always has a good comeback. But I made him say not bad. Minor victory for me. I got cat called harassed by a car full of dudabris while I was walking one day. I saw them pull into a gas station half a block up the street. Walked up to their parked car and unleashed some serious wrath on them. They were pretty mouthy from a moving car. And pretty sheepish when they were parked. Nothing to say for themselves. I don't remember everything I said. But my closing line was no girl wants to hear disgusting things like that. Especially, cue the longest. Most disgusted. Most scathing slow up and down look of all time, not from the likes of you. Then I marched triumphantly off into the sunset to an imaginary Orson Welles applauding in my head. One time I was working in a building that had this angry paste white, I thought he might have been albino. But he had colored eyes, and a bunched up back. Like a hunchback sort of thing. Sounds like I'm making this up. But I'm not. So anyway. He was getting all bent out of shape over something. Can't remember what. And he says. Don't make me angry. You wouldn't like me when I'm angry. I say. I know. How do you know? He's totally taken aback by my response. Cause I don't like anyone when they are angry. Double quote. It wasn't really a comeback. But a good moment. I was hanging out with a handful friends at one of their houses when one of the girls, there were four there at the time, had a wild idea for everyone to get in the kiddie pool and cool off, it was a hot day. Huh? We'll have to go to somewhere to get a, garden, hose me. I think we have all the hose we need right here. I was doing a presentation in class using powerpoint. One of my friends who loves to make fun of people made a slick comment when one of my jokes fell flat. And he just laughed at me and said fail. I knew I had to say something back. And remembering a lyric from a rap song. I said in front of the class and teacher with a serious tone. Unal if you can take a dick you can take a joke. 
Double quote. The class erupted in laughter and my friend got red cheeks. And tried to laugh it off as well. Pure bliss was that moment. Driving home after a movie with my brother we stop at a red light and some teenage kids pull up next to me in a minivan and start revving the engine. I rolled down my window and sarcastically said nice car. The kid driver responded with. Nice face, typical stupid comeback, to which I replied. Hey thanks. Your mom sure did enjoy it when she was sitting on it last night. His friends laughed and he just yelled fuck you and then I drove off since the light changed. I was in for a 6 month status check out with the operations staff at work. As soon as I sat down the chief looks at me and said we need to talk about your parking down at base now I drive a large truck and the lot behind base is very small. If I'm in a rush I make sure it's between the lines. But that's about it. I am also openly gay and responded with I park as straight as I am the entire staff broke out laughing. Chief didn't have a response. 5th grade. I was always getting bullied by this kid Elliot. I was the loser nerd girl one ring below him on the ladder of losers. So he'd always try to fight me when a teacher left the room. This time we had escalated and would just shy of me throwing a light desk at him. He yelled. You fight like a girl. Double quote. I said. Oh yeah? Well so do you. Right before hurling the desk at him. The whole class who had over the burn. And we inverted rungs on the loser social ladder once and for all. I was at a wedding. Sitting at a large table where two young wives were holding court. They were drilling the single men at the table. Including me. Wife. And you? What's wrong with you? Why aren't you married? Double quote. I was smoking a cigar. And I finished my puff. Then I said. Me. Do me a favor and say that again. Double quote. Wife. Why aren't you married? Double quote. Me. No, do it exactly how you did it before. Lean across the table. Furrow your brow and point your finger at me. Double quote. She laughed. And did it. Wife. Furrowed brow. Pointing. Why aren't you married? Double quote. Me. Exactly. Double quote. My mom is a tiny but a fierce woman. God. I love her. One time. We had just arrived from a ballet. I was six. As we entered our apartment complex. My mom ran over to the mailboxes. And I waited for the elevator. Two thug looking men walked in, probably in their twenties. My mom was thirty. As I was standing by myself. One of the guys says you got any money? I reply no scared. Then he says. Wanna suck my dick? I again reply no and run to my mom. Telling her what happened. She comes back to the elevator with me. Looks at me. As I'm looking at the guy who had just asked a 6 year old totally inappropriate questions. Looks back at him and says. You got any money? Double quote. He replies. No. So she continues wanna suck my dick. Double quote. They run. I was 12 years old but looked 16-18 because I developed very early and was well endowed. It was Halloween and my mom was in one of her I'm super religious now moods which came and went every couple of years for no apparent reason. So she decided we could only trick or treat at them all. As usual she remembered my two younger brothers and got them costumes but forgot about me so my only options were to wear the costume she bought for her work party or miss out. She and my aunt were going as a sexy angel aunt, and a sexy devil, mom, which I found ironic considering her sudden religious bent. I chose to wear her costume, which consisted of a tight red full body suit, tail, horns and pitchfork even though I was intensely uncomfortable. After having been turned away from the Christian bookstore I was feeling pretty down. I wasn't religious but went there all the time because they had pretty stickers and were across from the store my mom worked in at the mall. As I made my way through them all dads kept giving me funny looks and moms were giving me dirty looks. I just wanted some freaking candy and everyone was being a jerk. Suddenly these two college aged guys stop right in front of me and one looks me up and down and loudly says. Nice. Huge tits. Double quote. I was a quiet shy bookworm but this was the final straw. I looked him up and down. 
shook my head sadly and said. A-W-W. Too bad. Small penis. Double quote. His mouth fell open and his friend cracked up. Feeling like a badass I turned and walked the other direction. Right into my mother. Her face was red and her eyes were huge. I thought huh. So this is how I die. And then she laughed so hard and long I thought she was going to pass out. Then she bought me an orange Julius and we never spoke of it again. TL. DR. The devil made me do it. At a friend's house with some people hanging out when a buddy says to me. You know you are the only one here without an iPhone laughing as he says it. Without any hesitation I respond with. Yeah kind of like how you are the only virgin here. He stopped talking for a while after that. I am probably too late on this thread for this to get noticed but it made me feel great. One time at school. This guy snuck a tampon out of my bag. Took it out of the wrapper. Put a pencil in the wrapper and put it back in my bag. And kept the tampon himself. I didn't discover it till I went to the bathroom. And found a pencil instead of a tampon. What was he planning? Like I wouldn't notice and I'd stick a pencil up my vagina? My friend came into the bathroom and said he was planning on shooting the tampon at me when I came back out. Apparently he thought they were spring loaded or something. He was a dick and not very bright. He told everyone he was gonna do it. Somehow he thought it was impressive. I'm not sure why. I walked back out of the bathroom. I put my hand on his shoulder and said. Chris. Congrats on finally getting your period. But if you need a tampon. Don't be embarrassed to ask your mom. I'm sure she'd be happy to buy her little girl a box. Double quote. Office diva who was always a snot to everyone. Especially about superficial shit like how they dress. One day in July. She comes up wearing this white leather skirt. A camisole top with a see-through leopard print top over it and more gold than Solomon had. I. Having a chronic foot problem. Was wearing a pair of Van skate shoes that day. As the box of the those shoes helps when I have an issue with my joints. She approaches and asks. In a snotty way. So. Do you have a skate competition directly after work? Double quote. My reply. You know that rule about whites after Labor Day? Yes. With a confused look on her face as it is July same rule applies to animal prints and being over 40 she looked aghast at me and whispered. In a defeated voice. But I am not 40. I look at her and say in a surprised voice. Really? Could not have called that one. Double quote. Not really comebacks but I thought they were great nonetheless. Him. I don't eat things with a face. Me. Well your wife must be disappointed. Double quote. And another. Boss. I'm going to have to pull out as my wife will be having her baby then. Me. Well if you did that earlier you wouldn't be in this situation. I'm particularly proud of the last one. He went bright red and everyone around was speechless. XBL. A guy was being a real jerk. Kept asking me how big my boobs were and if I was touching them. Finally exploded and said you need to learn how to talk to women. Otherwise your mom will be the only one who'd ever love you. Seconds later he dropped from the game. Super harsh but he asked for it. I never seem to be able to get a trash talk complaint. I guess this was more of a joking pickup line. But a cute female bartender at a restaurant I used to frequent had it to that said I cannot be in love because I am love. I told her that if she was love. That must mean I could be in her. Personally I thought I was being corny and silly. But she claimed she had never heard that one before and laughed. You blokes don't what pain is like. Try getting kicked in the balls. That's nothing compared to childbirth. Okay fine. I get you pregnant and you kick me in the balls and we'll compare experiences. Dot. Double quote. Unfortunately it didn't lead to me getting laid. I did enjoy the raucous laughter and her silence afterwards though. This guy, let's call him Mike, was making fun of some guy's acne when the guy walked by us. Me. That was a real asshole thing to say. Mike. Mike. You're the asshole. I'm not a liar. Me. If I wanted my own comeback I wouldn't have wiped it off your mom's chin. I saw it on a reddit thread a month ago or so. And it worked like a ducking charm. 
he didn't say anything else after that. My brother was driving, perfectly I might add, when a lady with her daughter drove up next to him. Rolled down her window and started yelling at him yada yada kids these days. Yada yada fucking hurry up. Yada yada learn how to drive ass well. Brother. Without missing a beat. Sticks his whole head out the window and yells shut up bitch I'll cut your daughter's tits of. So ridiculous. So quick. So vulgar. Lady put up the window and sped off. There's no comeback anyone can muster after a comment like that. I was a cocktail waitress and have always had a rather deep. Husky voice. A table of five guys sat in my section. Me. Hi. What can I get for you? Customer. Whoa. Listen to that voice. Did you used to be a man? Me. No. Did you? Roars of laughter from his mates. I saved it for months. It was by pure chance too. Me and my friend were walking to get lunch. An asshole we know decides to do what he does best. Be an asshole. So after telling him to shut up and a few 7 stroke 10 comebacks. He says. Derps, my friends, dick must be the size if a tic tac I respond accordingly. So that's why your mother's breath is always so fresh. Arsehole tries to regain his dignity. Yeah. It gets smaller every time I succeed. Whoa. It must be gone by now no bullshit. I saved this comeback for over 3 months to use in one day. Not funny. Just awful. My grandmother came with my family on holiday one year when I was about 10 and spent pretty much the entire time moaning her face off and shouting at all the kids for running around and making noise. On a beach FFS. After I dared to answer her back. She snapped you really are good for nothing to which I replied yeah. Well the only good thing about you is that when you die. We get everything you own. Double quote. She wouldn't speak to me for days afterwards even after my mother forced me to apologize. Open bracket. Not mine but a friend. Went to the gas station to get gas and there were four total guys in the car. Gas station is busy and packed and kinda cramped but they really needed gas so they went anyway. My friend gets out and pumps his gas and finishes everything up. He's about to get back in the car when some Mexican guys runs his truck into my friend's car. It wasn't hard or anything but there was a little dent on the side and it was enough to be upset about. No one wants to get their car hit. So my friend walks over the other guy and he gets out too. Now it's obvious that the guy hit my friend's car but the Mexican dude is adamantly refusing that anything happened. The guy can't speak English well but he was being a real dick and kept saying I didn't hit anything. Dot. After 5 minutes of this interaction my friend gets pissed and doesn't want to waste any more time. He's really pissed and the guy's being a huge asshole. So he says fuck it and cocks back and nails the guy in the face. Knocking him, out. Comma completely to the ground. Then looks at him and says I didn't hit anything either and then gets in his car and leaves. Now maybe the guy was speechless because he was unconscious but either way it was a badass one liner. Wasn't mine but I'll never forget. We were in 6th grade and there was this kid that was always the trouble make. Richie. One day while Richie was making trouble in MR. F's class. MR. F reached his breaking point. Richie. Quit screwing around and being disruptive and just apply yourself. You are going to be 40 years old still in the 6th grade. Dot. Richie looked him dead in the eye and retorted. You're 40 and still in the 6th grade. Double quote. One day me and a fellow co-worker were talking about World of Warcraft at work. Our boss, who has a daughter that was pregnant who wasn't married to the baby dad, who was very old fashioned. Made a comment of how us nerds never get laid. I replied to him. Maybe you should have bought your daughter World of Warcraft then. He never said anything about being a nerd again. While I was washing the dishes that my sister was supposed to wash. She comes up behind me and says, EWW, you're so skinny. Comma I'm 5 feet 2 with a small body frame. I weigh about 115, I tell her to go away. And she starts poking me. EWW, turtlekage. I can see your spine. You're a skeleton. You're so skinny it's like terrifying. Well, I say, you're fat. 
she instantly starts crying. I never said sorry. Never will. I was in New York City and I saw a vibrant gay guy in a taxi stopped at a stoplight in a bad part of town. A black guy on the sidewalk immediately snarled nice sure faggot. And the gay guy without missing a beat said thanks it's 100% cotton your grandma made it for me. Not proud of it but as a kid, 5 years oldish, I was complaining about not getting something I wanted and my dad. Getting quite annoyed by this point. Accused me of being a spoiled child. I replied well. A child cannot spoil themselves. So it is your own fault if I am making you angry now. What a little prick. This was a while ago. I was getting McDonald's shortly after I woke up. My sister and I ordered and got our food. And went to the car to go back home. But then she said she wanted fries. I go back to order fries and the lady gives me just fries. No bag. I ask for a bag and she just throws me a paper bag. Me. Being sleepy had trouble opening the bag. Then she says. Huh? How old are you? Me. 15. Why? Huh? You're 15 and you can't open a bag? Daffuck? Then I say. Me. How old are you? Huh? 27. Me. And you're working at a McDonald's? Then I left. I was the sole guy on a business trip with some female co-workers. They wanted to have lunch in a little tea house. And I didn't care. So in we went. The tea house provided frilly hats to wear during tea. And of course they all insisted that I wear a pink one. Whatever. It's all good. Right? Well the woman who owned the place ran it with her son, who looked to be in his 20s. And he gave me no end of grief about wearing it. Every time he came into the small dining room, where a half dozen or so other people were also having lunch, he made some comment about how I should take it off, be more manly, and so on. His insistence finally started getting on my nerves. So the next time he came in and made a comment about the hat, I piped up. It could be worse. I said. The whole room silenced to hear what I would say. I could work in a tea house with my mommy. Double quote. The whole room erupted. Even his mom laughed. He laughed too. But I could tell it had struck a chord. He didn't really talk much the rest of the time we were there. In truth. I felt bad about it. I actually had a lot of respect for him helping his mom out like that. I just wanted him to stop bugging me about the hat. Not mine. But a favorite. My grandfather was very conservative and a supporter of Barry Goldwater, we live in AZ. At dinner when my dad was roughly 13 his dad was telling the family about how awesome Goldwater was. How he'd be the next president. And how minorities sucked. Basically. My dad chimed in, he has always been very political. And liberal, Goldwater is a hawk. He'll never be president. He just wants to start to war something along those lines. Apparently granddad was tired of dealing w8 kids for that day and hauled off and hit my dad off of the stool He was sitting on through tears. He responded. You can beat me up, but you can't make me wrong Turns out he was right TL DR just the quotes right there My best friend was diagnosed with cancer a little while ago and when the doctors were explaining to him what going through chemo was going to be like he looked at me and said I'm gonna be puking all over your house me. That's alright buddy. It'll hold your hair bar. Full stop. Full stop. At the hearing where my divorce was final. My ex-wife cleaned up. Got the house. The TV she took when she left that was mine. The TV I bought to replace it. Half the money in savings. And I had to pay spousal support for 8 months and an exorbitant amount of child support. The only thing I got was half the credit card debt. 9k. And 8 of it was hers. And I had to pay for her dickbag attorney. Another 2k. We walked out of the courtroom. Her slutty friend and bitch mom came for moral support she walks up all smug and says how do you like that? Her counterage was smiling. 2. I replied. They can take my house my TV. And every penny I have. But they can't make me love you. Instantly the smiles changed to drop jaws. 
She looked at me like I kicked a cancer baby and before anyone could speak I said good day and walked off. Then I went home and cried. Walking down Main Street in Huntington Beach is slim fit jeans with my friend, also wearing slim fit jeans, when we pass a group of three larger bro guys, all obviously using steroids. Wearing terrible hitman fight gear tap out famous stars and straps, as we are passing them on the sidewalk one of them says nice pants faggots my buddy casually stops and with a straight face and no sign of anger says yeah you know I thought these wear great pants too. That's why I took them after I fucked your sister last night. The three bro guys stop. Look pissed for a minute and then the one who insulted us smiles and says I did not expect that at all. Good comeback then after a long pause they walked on and so did we. Strangest shit I have experienced. The only thing you know about men's fashion is what's left on your bedroom floor every morning after they sneak out. Our sorority girl receptionist butted into a conversation about clothes I was having with a girl at work who wants her boyfriend to dress more like I do and has all kinds of questions. She eavesdropped. Walked up. Interrupted. And told my friend that judging by the fact that I was wearing Sperry's in May and they are a summer shoe I knew nothing about men's fashion. My friend in high school wore her own shorts on sports day because she thought the school ones were too short and one day her sport teacher got so angry he yelled Natalie take those shorts off right now and she looked him square in the eye and go shouldn't you wind me and dine me first sir? She got suspended and it was great. Bit of a backstory here. I worked with a guy who was a huge Mac enthusiast. Myself being a PC guy. We'd occasionally have fun sessions ripping into each other company we worked for came out with a promotion for free installation of the PC version of a piece of software. Not the Mac version. Him why did they do that? That's biased against Mac people. Me because Mac users suck him well truthfully. You put the disk in on a Mac and it installs itself me if anything. Mac users would need more help. They'll put the disk in shiny side up because it's prettier. Him. I got nothing. I was in the middle of an oral history report on George Washington. Usually. I don't give them in front of the class because I had a stutter. But my speech therapist encouraged me to take a leap of faith so I told the teacher I could give it in class. I accidentally called him Thomas Jefferson because I was so nervous. And a rude girl in the back snickers and hollers. I knew your brain was messed up. Double quote. I replied wwwl at least ihh have a b brain to m mess up. Double quote. A few of my classmates actually stood up to give me a standing ovation at the end of my report. Thinking about it still makes me tear up. And today I can mostly speak without stuttering. But it does still come out when I'm startled or anxious. Close bracket. A guy I worked with at Blockbuster got his driver's license taken away after too many DUIs. He was, at the time, 27 years old. So after the license revoking, he gets dropped off at work by his mother in an SUV. He comes in and he's making fun of co-workers and being a pretentious douche. And I have had enough about 20 minutes in. I looked him in the eye after he called someone a loser and I said Dan. Didn't your mommy drop you off at work today? Was it your turn to bring orange slices to soccer practice? A black customer heard me and went the I am. That was the end of his mockery of everyone for the day.